SwiftUI's group view might seem odd at first because it doesn't actually affect our layout at all. However, it performs an important purpose as a transparent layout container. It gives us the ability to add SwiftUI modifiers to multiple views without changing their layout or send back multiple views without using view builders. For example, we could build a little struct in here called user view. And this will be a view like so. And in the body for this view, I'm gonna make a group with three text views inside. We'll do text name is Paul, then text uh, country, country is England, then text pets, Luna and Aria, like that. Now I'll apply one modifier here, which is a font of title, but otherwise this group has no layout information. It doesn't say vertical, horizontal, whatever. All we're doing is saying apply the same title modifier to everything in that group at once. But there's no layout information. So we don't know if it's stacked horizontally, vertically, or by depth or whatever. And this is where the transparent layout behavior of group becomes important. Whatever parent places a user view gets to decide how its text views get arranged. For example, we can make a little content view here with a property to track when, if we're showing vertical layout or horizontal layout. I could say here, at state private var layout vertically is false. And then in the body property, I'm gonna make a button that toggles layout vertically. So we're moving between our layout styles. And for the label, if we are currently layout vertically, then do a vstack with our user view inside. But if we're not laying out vertically, do a hstack with our user view inside. So flipping between horizontal and vertical layout every time this button is pressed. Let's press Command R now and give it a quick try. There it's horizontal, pressing it, now it's vertical. So you can see it's working nicely. Now you might wonder how often you have to have alternative layouts like this one here, but the answer might surprise you. It's really common. You see, it's exactly what you want to happen when trying to write code that works across multiple device sizes. If you want layout to happen vertically because the horizontal space is constrained, but layout horizontally otherwise, it's perfect for that. Well, Apple provides a very simple solution for this called size classes, which is a thoroughly vague way of telling us how much space we have for our views. Now when I say thoroughly vague, I mean it. We have only two size classes, horizontally and vertically, called compact and regular. And that's it. That covers all screen sizes from the largest iPad Pro in landscape down to the smallest iPhone in portrait. That doesn't mean it's useless. Far from it. Just that it only lets us reason about our UI in the broadest of terms. To show these in action, we're going to make a view that has a property to track uh, the current horizontal size class. So we can switch between a VStack and HStack automatically. We could say, for example, here, I want a new environment value using dot horizontal size class called var horizontal size class. And then in our uh, view body, let's get rid of the button entirely. And I'll simply say, uh, this condition is going to be if our horizontal size class is equal to dot compact, use vstack. Otherwise, use hstack. Let's press Command R. Let's see how it looks. So we're in portrait mode. There is vstack. In landscape mode, they go across the way. I should say, by the way, in situations like this one where you have only one of these views inside your stacks, you can pass the views initializer directly to the vstack or hstack to make your code a bit shorter. We could say here the content is user view dot init directly. Pass that right in. Same for hstack. Here, user view dot init. And it'll work the same way. I know short code isn't everything, but this technique is pleasingly concise when using this approach to group layout. Now, what you see when the code runs depends on the device you're using. For example, you can see here I have my 15 Pro Max going between VStack and HStack correctly, but 
An iPhone 15 Pro, not a Pro Max, has a compact horizontal size class in both portrait and landscape, and sort of stays a V-stack the entire time. Regardless of whether we're talking our layout with size classes or buttons, the point is that our user view doesn't actually care. It's group just groups text views together without affecting the layout at all. So the layout arrangement on user view is given depends entirely on how it's used elsewhere. Now before I'm done, I want to mention one thing. SwiftUI does provide a view that goes some way towards making this behavior easier to use. It's called View That Fits, and you can provide this thing with several different layouts, and it'll automatically try each one in order until it finds one that can be fitted into the available space. For example, we could say, uh, let's get rid of some code here. We could say there's a view that fits, and inside there is a rectangle with a frame uh, width of 500, height of 200. So it'll try and fit that one first. If that fails, it'll go to the next one. I'll say it's a circle with a frame width of 200, height of 200. If that fails, the next one, if that fails, the next one, da -da -da. it'll work all its way down the line until it finds one that finally succeeds. And this is a, a better way of working if possible, right? So see now, uh, I'm in portrait mode. That thing is not wide enough to fit a 500 point wide rectangle, as we see a circle. But in landscape mode, it will fit, hence why we now see a landscape. If you can use view that fits, then you should. Because if you show the same view in several different forms, SwiftUI will correctly preserve the view state as the layout changes. However, it does limit the amount of control you get.